Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. Welcome to our part 8 of the beginner's guide for Windows Server Active Directory. And let's see what we have covered so far. We have understood the flexible single master operation roles. We have covered the schema master role, the domain naming master role, and we have also covered the RID master role. And in today's session, we are going to take a look at the infrastructure master role. So let's have a look at what a domain controller is. So any computer on which Active Directory database is present can be called as a domain controller, or any computer on which Active Directory domain services are installed and configured can be called as a domain controller. In this example over here, we have say two servers, Sydney DC and Paris DC. They are domain controllers because uh, they host Active Directory database. and we have some say member computers as well in our active directory domain they can be database servers laptops workstations see file servers web servers etc and they are not domain controllers because they don't host active directory database so there is a clear distinction between a domain controller and a member computer so we must understand this particular difference between a member computer and a domain controller so let's move ahead so we have all we all we have already say we already know these five rules schema master domain naming master rid master infrastructure master and pdc emulator we have already covered schema master domain naming master and rid master in our say earlier sessions today we are going to take a look at the infrastructure master so this infrastructure master is a domain wide role means there's only one domain controller designated as an infrastructure master in the entire domain so there's only one function of infrastructure master and that is infrastructure master say keeps a track of cross domain references so what is this all about what is this cross domain references what is keeping the track of cross domain references all about so let's dive in to understand what do you mean by keeping a track of cross domain references so before going ahead uh, we need to understand some basic concepts such as a global catalog so what exact what a global catalog is all about so what is a global catalog so again in the world of active directory uh, say if you look at the word global so it refers to the entire forest and it's a catalog means it's an index okay so global catalog like we can say it's a partial information of all the objects in the entire active directory forest so global catalog resides on a domain controller and uh, there can be multiple domain controllers with say global catalog residing on on it and uh, these domain controllers are merely called as or simply called as global catalog servers or gcs in the world of active directory so let's look at the basic definition of a global catalog say a global catalog is a domain controller which holds complete information of all the objects in its own domain and partial information of all the objects in the entire forest so if a domain controller is a global catalog means that domain controller knows about each and every object in the forest not complete information it will have say some partial information of each and every object in the forest so global catalog are known as partial attribute set or pass so let's see this global catalog in a graphical manner 
so let's say this our forest contoso.com and we have three domains contoso.com west.contoso.com and east.contoso.com and we have some domain controllers in contoso.com say five domain controllers in east.contoso.com and say six or domain controllers in west.contoso.com and we have some 11,700 objects in contoso.com and say 32,000 objects in west.contoso.com and we have say 25,800 objects in east.contoso.com now these objects can be computers servers users groups and so on and so forth as you know that everything in the world of active directory is an object now let's say these are our global catalog servers in every domain so in contoso.com we have two domain controllers which holds global catalog in east.contoso.com we have one domain controller and in west.contoso.com we have two domain controllers as our global catalogs now let's focus on contoso.com so the contoso.com global catalogs which are in red will have complete information of all the 11700 uh, say 700 objects in its own domain so it will have as it's a domain controller it will have complete information of each and every object as it will have uh, say it will know about each and every attribute at, of each and every object in its own domain and it will also have partial information of all the objects in east.contoso.com and west.contoso.com so it will have partial information of 32,000 objects and these 25,800 objects so both the global catalogs will have partial information so this is what global catalog is all about so let's look at infrastructure master with an example over here now so let's take an example that a user from contoso.com domain accessing a folder which is say located in east.contoso.com domain so we have this contoso.com domain and we have say east.contoso.com so we have two domain controllers in east.contoso.com dc1 and dc2 and we have users in say some users in contoso.com and we have a folder named finance data which is in east.contoso.com now these users in contoso.com are accessing this finance data folder now dc1 is our infrastructure master and dc2 is our global catalog so let us understand see so what is the role of infrastructure master and global catalog in this particular example of say people from or users from some other domain accessing the resources in some other domain in this example users from contoso.com accessing uh, uh, say a folder a shared folder from east.contoso.com so what is the role of infrastructure master and global catalog from east.contoso.com in this particular transaction so let's understand first of all we'll understand how access has been granted to users from contoso.com to a shared folder on east.contoso.com so what an admin do is first say users from this is the end result users from contoso.com are accessing a folder uh, say which is in east.contoso.com so what admins will do say admins will create a security group which is which has a universal scope in contoso.com domain number one step number two admins will create another security group with the domain local scope now this time in east.contoso.com domain now the third step the 
admins will do is admins will add all the users who want access to the folder finance data okay to the universal group which is present in the contoso.com domain because the users are in contoso.com and the resource is in east.contoso.com so we, we will create a security group with universal scope in contoso.com and we'll create another group say security group which is the scope is domain local in east.contoso.com and we'll add the users in the universal group and then admin will say add the universal group from contoso.com as a member of the domain local group in east.contoso.com so here the admins will nest the groups over here so the admin will add universal group as a member of domain local group which is present in east.contoso.com and then the admins will grant permissions okay say to the domain local group in east.contoso.com so whatever permissions read write or modify whatever permissions on that particular folder so let's look at this uh, scenario say graphically so this is our architecture so we have contoso.com and we have east.contoso.com and uh, our resource is present in east.contoso.com and our users are present in contoso.com domain so we have three domain controllers in east.contoso.com dc1 dc2 and dc3 dc1 is our global catalog dc3 is our infrastructure master and dc2 is just a domain controller now the first step is to create a universal group or a security group with universal scope in contoso.com domain so we have created a security group with the universal scope then we have added the users as a member of that particular group then we created another group that is a security group again named contoso users uh, but the scope over here is domain local and the next step would be to add this a universal group as a member of this domain local group so as soon as we add this particular group as a member of this contoso users domain local group the active directory on east.contoso.com don't know about this universal group okay because this uh, folder access universal group is a foreign group or an alien group it doesn't belongs to east.contoso.com active directory so what will happen is the domain controller will ask global catalog boss who is this uh, group where it it's coming from because global catalog is again a domain controller who has partial information of all the objects in the entire active directory forest so global catalog knows about this folder access universal group so global catalog will say okay give the information that this is a universal group and it belongs to contoso.com and after that we'll be able to say delegate or assign permissions on this contoso users group on the finance data folder so this is the entire transaction and these users will be then able to access finance data folder so the, the users from some other domain are accessing resources in some other domain so these these are cross domain references so these cross domain references are tracked by infrastructure master so this is a single say uh, master operation role so he will be he's the dc3 is the only domain controller who will be tracking all the cross domain references so if any other resources uh, any other users accessing any other resources from east.contoso.com 
infrastructure master will be responsible for keeping a track of all the cross domain references because an infrastructure master will contact the global catalog to get the information of let's say any object which is coming from outside its own domain so this is the relation between the infrastructure master and the global catalog so hope you have understood the basic concept so let us understand how infrastructure master keeps the track now so infrastructure master will create a phantom object okay phantom means a dummy object referencing an object from any other domain phantom objects again what is a phantom object again phantom objects are low level database objects that active directory uses for internal management operations and we human beings administrators we won't be able to see these phantom objects in active directory okay they are just meant for say tracking objects which cannot be viewed in active directory by the administrators and uh, say phantom objects contain minimal set of information to let a domain controller refer to the location in which the original object exists so the f the only attribute a phantom object contains is say distinguished name of the object or the dn of the object the object global unique identifier we have seen this in our earlier sessions and uh, the object sid so these are the minimal set of attributes which are the part of our phantom object so infrastructure master will create a phantom object say referencing Okay, the object which is coming from some other domain. So, this is how the infrastructure master keeps a track of cross-domain references. So, if you want to know more about, say, Active Directory group types, group scope, and say group nesting, I request you to please leave a comment. I'll, uh, if you want, I can create a descriptive, uh, say, in detail video on. group types group scopes group nesting and uh, say group nesting strategies as well so let's look at today's summary so we have seen what infrastructure master is we have seen the functions of infrastructure master that is it keeps a track of cross domain references we have also seen what a global catalog is again a global catalog is a domain controller which holds complete information of all the objects in its own domain and partial information of all the objects in the entire forest and we have also seen the relation between a global catalog and the infrastructure master domain controller this was end of part 8 hope you have enjoyed today's session and understood the functions of infrastructure master So in our part nine, uh, we'll be taking a look at our last FSM role, that is PDC emulator. And thank you again for joining today's session. If you feel this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please subscribe and share the video with your technical community. And have a great day.